Hello, I'm Ed, welcome back to the studio. I hope you enjoyed the video I did on 35mm film photography and developing. What I've decided to do is to take a, another step back and go into medium format uh, film uh, shooting. I won't be doing the developing on this because I'm going to use colour film. Medium format cameras are absolute beasts and uh, they are far more difficult to understand than 35mm cameras, but they're also, I think, a lot more fun. So this is the Mamiya RB67 and it's a professional medium format film camera. Now I used this to shoot my beekeeper portraits many years ago and it did the job really well. Medium format cameras shoot on 120mm roll film. There are different kinds of cameras that use that film. The Hasselblad, which is the famous medium format camera which has square frames, that shoots six by six. This shoots six by seven. So you actually get fewer shots to the roll of film because it's using more film per shot, but you are using the same film. One of the things I said about the annoyances of using a film camera were that I wanted to change film halfway through and I couldn't. That is something which these medium format cameras think about. The film is in here. So you can actually detach the film back and put a different back on with different film in it and continue to shoot and then go back to this film later uh, if you have got more than one back. Okay, so another thing that is really nice about this camera is it is completely manual, which is why even though this is ancient, it is completely usable now because I don't need to find any batteries that are no longer made anymore, don't need any accessories, it just works. Brilliant. So, a little tour of the camera. So on the top here, you have your shutter speeds going down from T, which is the same as bulb. One second, half a second, quarter of a second, eighth of a second, 15th, 30th, 60th, 125th, 250th, 400th of a second, that's the fastest shutter speed that there is. But you aren't going to need a faster shutter speed than this. Uh, in the sort of situations you'd use this camera, you've got apertures going from 3.5 to 32. Focusing is a bit weird because normally you'd expect to focus it around here, but actually this is what's called a bellows camera, which means that the whole front unit moves forwards and backwards. You see there's like a bellows, that's the bellows there. The body moves forward and backwards. So the lens is a different distance from the film at the back. And that's how you focus it. And to see where you're focusing it, you open the top here and you can either look down into there. This is like the traditional camera where you look down into it. And if you want to be very precise, if it's a bright day and you can't see what you're doing like that, or it's, or it's not clear, it's not big enough, the subject. You can pop out this lens and then you can look down as if you were looking into the viewfinder. Okay, so that's really exciting. Another thing which is kind of cool about this camera, you'll see here, it's in portrait mode. So if you want to take a different style of picture, a landscape or a portrait, then what you do, hey, no problem, I will just twist the film canister around and I'm now in landscape mode. This is the film wind on. And the interesting thing is the film, because it's in a different container from the front, everything you do, you have to do twice. You wind the film on, but then you also have to recock the shutter here because they are not connected in the same way as in a 35 millimeter camera. Now, I tried to release the shutter, the shutter's here, didn't do anything. Why is that? Because it's communicating with the back and telling me that I have my dark slide in, so the film is not exposed. So this is what's called a dark slide, and it is basically a sheet of metal which goes between the film and the lens. So when that's out, the only thing that's stopping the light coming in is the shutter of the lens. So when I now press the shutter, 
you'll hear it releases to expose the film. Dark slide needs to be in to prevent the light getting to the back of the camera. It is an issue when these get old, if you get light leaks around the edges here, and I've not used this camera for many years, so it's gonna be interesting to see if I do get any light leaks because the plastic here has warped or the metal um, seals around the edges, the rubber seals are no longer operating as they should. Um, so to actually put a film in, let me just put this, the big chunky part of the camera to one side here and we'll just look at the film magazine. So as I say, you could get different backs to put on. I've actually got a Polaroid back, so you, if you were going to do fashion photography and you wanted to see what something was going to look like before you shot the frame for a magazine, because that's what these cameras were for, they were for glossy magazines because they produced huge negatives. So you'd, you'd shoot your Polaroid, say that looks good, swap the back to the film back with the correct film in it. And this, obviously the last time I shot this, I shot Ilford XP2. To open the back here, there's like a little metal piece and you pull that out and if I open then the back, you'll see that this is actually two pieces. So this lifts out. So that's the dark slide and the rear cover, which I'll just put down there. And then this is the film cassette or magazine, which also has the plate there that the, the film rests against uh, to hold it flat in the camera. You see the spool there that I'm going to wind the film onto. That is the old spool from the last film that I used because unlike with a 35mm camera where you rewind onto the spool at the end. What you do with this, it just winds on and in the end it goes on to the other spool and then you remove that spool and take that to be processed. So each time you use this camera, you keep the spool that you had from the last film. There aren't many things where you kind of keep a bit of the consumable and it becomes part of your machine. So yeah, you can see on the, the take-up spool there, there's like a slit again in the same way that there was uh, in the 35mm camera and the um, roll film goes through that slit and then gets wound on. So am I going to do, I need to swap that, I need to swap them over, that's what I need to do. It's all coming back to me now. So yes, that is the roll that I used, but it winds on to that roll. So what I need to do first is remove that roll on that side. So you can see that's that's what roll film comes on, on that roll, that little plastic roll there. And I'm going to move that from that side to this side. So I put that back on, making sure it, you see the little grooves, it's got to go into those grooves. So is that clicked in? There we go, that's in. And now you see I can wind on. So that's how it works. So then my new film will go on to there and will wind on to that. Gosh, I love the way these are built. It's kind of like, I love motorcycles. I love uh, old fashioned machinery. And this is why it's just so clever. Uh, right, so anyway, I'll put this back in now and I need to remember which way up it goes. It will only go in one way, but I don't want to try and force it. There is a little dot, I think, that shows which way up it should be. Will it close? Yes, so it looks like I've got it the right way around straight away, which is amazing. Okay, so that is now a sealed unit again, and that can then go on the back of the camera. Again, it will only go in one way, and then these two pieces here at the edge, they slide on to lock the back in place so it won't come off. Excellent, I think the camera is in working order. So, with this camera, it's completely manual, there's no light meter in it. So, how do you know what exposure to set? In the old days, you would have a light meter and you would take a light reading and then use that reading to select your shutter speed and aperture. In these modern days, what I'm going to do, because I either sold or threw away my light meter many years ago, what I will do is I will 
set the digital camera to the same speed as the film speed that I'm going to use for this, take a picture, see what the aperture and shutter value are. So let me show you the film. Here it is. The film comes in these light tight packages, which again, I just love these. It's just, it, isn't there something lovely about getting these little packets and there's some magic inside. Let's take the back off this camera and we'll put the camera itself down here because the important bit is loading the film. There we have it. A roll of 120 film. It doesn't have perforations on it like 35mm film. And there's a, a band here that is holding it so it doesn't all unwind. So what I'll do is I'll break that seal and then it will be ready to reel on. Something that's really important to remember is which way up to do this because the first roll I ever shot of 30, uh, sorry, of 120 film, I loaded this the wrong way up. So I was basically exposing the cardboard backing rather than the film itself. And I only worked that out after I'd shot the film. So let's not do that this time. Okay, so let's just remove this seal without it all springing open and all the whole film becoming exposed. Best to do this in subdued light, but it's, uh, it's a grim Stockport day. It's raining out there today, so I don't think we need to worry about there being too much light. Right, and now you can see that's the end of the cardboard and the film. So that is the leader, right? the leader you get in a 35 mil, and that goes on to here. It wants to wind so that that is the bit that's going to expose. That's not actually film, that's the cardboard back in the film is further along. But it wants to be that way around, not that way around, which is why the mistake I made the first time I shot film. film. So let's put that on there. And then that goes into the slit here. That needs to make sure that that goes easy. If it flips out, then it's not going to wind on properly and I'm going to lose it also. There we go. Can you see? That's really important that that's gone on properly there. And you can see it's on the backing there. And then you see this little arrow there shows that's where I need to put it in. Is that the right way around? Ah, you see this time I put it in upside down. So I need to turn it round like that. So it actually goes in and then the back should clip on like that. And I lock it there. That is locked, that is light tight if it hasn't warped with time. And I'm on S. And can you see now that it's gone past S and I can just wind it on. There we go. Now I'm gonna put this on the back of the camera and hopefully that goes on and it's locked into place. And then I continue to wind on until, can you see there, a little one has appeared in the frame. Now is it gonna stop? It is. Wow. Our film is loaded. We are good to go. So I now need to go and shoot this roll of film and I need to find something interesting and suitable for the format. Now, portraits are the natural thing to do on this. Uh, or landscapes, not street photography, uh, not sports. I think that's fairly obvious. There will now be a short intermission. Go and get some popcorn. <laughs>